In this video, we're going to talk about distillation. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the basic principles of distillation, perform distillation to separate a mixture of liquids. Distillation is a separation technique used to separate liquids from non-volatile solids or to separate liquids with different boiling points. The distillation setup is shown in this figure. We have our reaction mixture usually in a round bottom flask sitting on top of heat source and the thermometer sits here measuring the temperature of the vapors. Once boiling, the vapors rise to the side arm and eventually enter the condenser. The condenser is surrounded by a section where cold water enters on one side and exits from the other side. The water runs against the direction of vapor. This cold water condenses the vapor to liquid as it goes through and is then collected in the receiver. This is referred to as the distillate. There are two types of distillation, simple and fractional distillation. Simple distillation is used when the liquids to be separated have a large difference in their boiling points. Let's go over an example. Here we have a mixture of two different liquids. Liquid A boils at 100 degrees and liquid B boils at 170 degrees. Once the distillation is set up, we're going to slowly heat the reaction mixture until the mixture begins to boil. As the temperature reaches 100 degrees, Liquid A, which is the more volatile liquid, evaporates first, though a small amount of liquid B also evaporates. If you are unsure about why liquid B also evaporates, review Ralph's law and ideal gas law. The vapors slowly reach the condenser. The condenser cools the vapors and the distillate is collected in the receiver. Most of liquid B, on the other hand, remains in the original reaction mixture and so a separation has been accomplished. Let's look at the distillation graph which plots temperature versus volume of distillate. At the beginning, the temperature slowly rises until it hits 100 degrees and it plateaus. This is when liquid A is being collected. Once liquid A is done, the temperature rises until it reaches the boiling point of the second liquid, which is 170 degrees in this example and then it plateaus again while we're collecting it. Now, what if the liquids don't have a large difference in their boiling points? For example, ethanol and water have only a 22 degrees difference in their boiling points. Now, the curve is going to look like this, meaning the distillate is a mixture of water and ethanol, which is not a great separation. To achieve a greater separation, we could distill the distillate multiple times. With every round of distillation, ethanol becomes more pure. However, multiple cycles of distillation are not really practical, especially because we lose product in each round. This is when we use fractional distillation instead. The only difference between fractional distillation and simple distillation is the use of a fractionating column, which is usually filled with beads, increasing its surface area. Fractionating column allows for multiple cycles of vaporization and condensation, so it is similar to doing multiple cycles of simple distillation. Let me explain that. Liquid A has a lower boiling point compared to liquid B in this reaction mixture. Let's look a closer look at what happens inside the fractionating column. For clarity, the beads in the fractionating column have been omitted. The vapor going up is rich in liquid A but also includes vapors from liquid B. While ascending, the vapors encounter a cooler area in the column and condense. Some of the condensate revaporize again while some of it will drip back down. With each round of revaporization re and condensation, the vapors become more rich in liquid A. Each vaporization condensation cycle is equivalent to a simple distillation. So by the time the vapor reaches the top of the column, it has undergone several simple distillations. However, because this is done in one setup, much less material is lost compared to if it had done several se separate simple distillations. Another advantage of distillation is to move the equilibrium to the product. For example, the synthesis of methyl cyclohexene from methyl cyclohexanol is an equilibrium reaction. A 
According to Le Chatillot's principle, one way to drive the equilibrium towards product is to remove the product as it is being formed. This can be achieved through distillation, where methyl cyclohexane is removed as it is being formed to drive the equilibrium towards product. Here are a few tips for successful distillation. 1. Heat the mixture slowly until the liquid begins to boil. 2. Make sure the distillation flask is not more than half full. 3. Never distill to dryness. Stop distillation by removing the heat source before all the liquid is vaporized. Distillation to dryness can result in peroxide formation which could ignite or explode. Make sure the heat source is very easy to remove. 4. Check all the joints to make sure they're tight and there's no leak. Some vapors are flammable and could ignite if they come into contact with the heat source. 5. Make sure to add a stair bar or boiling stones to prevent bumping. Let's review quickly. Distillation is a useful technique used to separate two liquids with different boiling points through vaporization and condensation. It results in a distillate that is enriched in the lower boiling liquid. A simple distillation gives a relatively good separation only if the boiling points are very different. Otherwise, fractional distillation must be used to achieve a good separation which involves multiple cycles of vaporization and condensation. Thank you for watching.